Right. Welcome to this uh, the session. Um, I do want to say that uh, first, this is a session designed for uh, use in classrooms. Um, and it's ba it is based off of uh, conversations over the last couple of years since we started using the UN goals. Um, and where we asked students, you know, hey, how did you uh, choose to do this? And they said, oh, well, you know, we found this goal and we decided we want to do it and then we applied it but it didn't have to do anything with their community so say it's like ocean life while they live in arizona which there's no ocean here um so this is designed around that idea of what students are saying so that then we can uh you know more appropriately apply the equities within their spaces to the goals All right so I would hope that you put yourself in the mind of the students and look at it from that perspective. So here we go. Okay. So the first question that we need to know is, you know, why do we need to know about it? And it very clearly comes from right out of the NEDC that it needs to be a community-centered pr um, project based around the UN goals. And if you think about you know, middle schoolers, even like early grades with the uh, freshmen, they may or may not know what those goals are. And so we need to make sure that we're able to talk to them about, you know, this is what the goals are, this is what they do, and things like that. So we need to make sure that they know what the goals are to be able to compete in, to compete in the MESA projects. Um, but the nice thing about this is that students can identify inequities within their own spaces. They can look at their schools, their communities, their neighborhoods, wherever, and they can see things where they're gonna say, that's not fair. The nice thing about the goals is that then they can say, all right, well, what's not fair? All right, guess what? They're right in the UN goals. So that's kind of the whole purpose of this is to be able to tie the goals to what they're already seeing. And so the first thing I want to do is have a common understanding about inequity. Because there's a lot of different things out there that say, you know, what inequity is. Um, but we need to have some kind of common definition so that we're all working from the same thing. And so I took them straight from the Cambridge Dictionary, um, that the fact that a situation is not fair or something is not fair in a situation. Pretty broad. And the first thing I always ask students is, do we need to add to this? Or does it, do you think this will cover what we're talking about when we're talking about inequity? Because we're not talking specifically right now, we're just talking about inequities in general. So this is the same question I would ask you as your teachers, my teacher, my student teachers, is do we need to add something else to this, or is this going to be a good working definition as we move through the session? I taught long enough to know that silence is golden. Um, Oh, that's a good question, Tom. How do we define fair? And so, you know, a fair is kind of an interesting concept. If you have like a three-year-old, when they know you can't have kidney, they think that's not fair. If you talk to, say, like a 15-year-old, it's not fair that they can't drive. If you talk to, say, someone who's, you know, older, they're going to come up with different things. So something like not universal access or use, would we say that, would we say that that's a, uh, a, something that would define that as being fair? And really, when you think about it, fair is defined by personal experience 
as well as the systems that we live in. And so what I might think is unfair may be something different than what you think is unfair. So I think, Tom, you bring up a really interesting point in that what is fair. And I think that as we're talking about students, that would be a good thing to be able to define for them. Because different peoples have different views on life and something may or may not be fair. Yeah, and I think you're right. The context in which we define define fairness does determine a lot what that is. Um, I think for the, the purposes of this session, and this session only, because while well, we're all adults, so we can figure this out, um, we'll talk about not universal access or use. I think that's a good way to be able to, to see it. Um, <clears throat> I think as we get into our different situations, um, we'll be able to have it more narrowly defined. Um, but we're also coming at this from across the country, and we have different ideas about what's, what could or could not be fair based in that space. And since we're talking about the UN goals, I think that fits into what we're, what we're going to be talking about. Does anybody have a problem with that? And I can only see like four people on the screen. So I'm going to, the four people I see are shaking their heads no. So I, you guys are my litmus test for moving forward. All right, so I want you to take two minutes and think about equities in your communities. This is 100% personal in your space. So what are those things that you don't think are fair? And then we're gonna put them into the chat. All right, so you've got two minutes and your time starts now. So we've seen a lot of similarities in what's happening so far. There's a lot of technology on Wi-Fi, especially, which is especially important because right now the Wi-Fi in Arizona is terrible because it's 100 plus degrees. Um, for housing, resources, transportation, healthcare, education. environment, homelessness, school resources, and so we've generated a huge list here, which is important because there is, I mean, there's a lot of things that fall into this. Um, some of these we have um, the ability to address, some of them we don't. Um, however, a lot of these we can now tie into what we're doing. So the first thing I always like to try to do is get students to think what's happening in your space? What's happening in these spaces that we do? 
And then we want to try to tie them into what those goals are. And so these goals are huge. I mean, if you sit down and read them, you can read for multiple hours and still not fish reading through all of them. There's 17 of them. They're broken down into sections and subsections and sub subsections. They're huge. And so what we can how can we take these, these inequities we, we've identified and now tie them to the goals? Because that's really the uh, driver I mean, force within the space. And so the easiest way, I think, is to try to break it down into very simple spaces. Because if we try to get into the nitty, 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 nitty gritty of what these goals are, we're going to get lost in the weeds. And it's going to get confusing. And so I actually reached out to someone at the UN and said, hey, if I did this, would this be an adequate representation? And the response back was, yeah, I think that looks good. Honestly, I only understand the first seven of them. Oh, okay. They have teams of people working on each goal. So they're huge. So the first one, the first goal that we have is no poverty, right? And we saw that in our list. And really what it says is we want to end poverty everywhere, right? And these are the official UN goals. But what does it actually mean? Close, that, close income gaps and ensure people have the quote unquote wealth to live comfortably. And so we really want to make sure that we don't have the economic disparities that we see across the world, you know, the one percenters, um, and that we can live comfortably in whatever job that we have. There's goal one. Goal two would be zero hunger. And hunger, chief security, for nutrition. But what it means, hey, we can all have healthy food to live more comfortably. Um, and an interesting piece about this is they're looking at, well, if we're preserving, if we have too much food with preservatives, is that really health living? That's a good question. Good health and well-being. We want healthy lives, well be for everyone at all ages. And so we want to make sure that everybody can have access to healthcare and medicines so that their life is comfortable and they can live as long as possible. So you can see what see what I'm doing here. Because I'm taking what is the goal, what is the actual definition for that, and then break it down in terms of what it means. And notice how these definitions are not super in-depth because trying to take something huge and put it into something that students can understand. And we can keep going with these. Quality education. Ensure inclusive and equitable education. And what it means is everybody deserves the opportunity to do what they want to do. The Mesa way. I feel like I'm quoting the Mandalorian. This is the way. <laughs> But we're laughing at my new friend. <laughs> All right, gender equality. All right, to achieve gender equity, equality, and empower all women and girls. And this is an interesting one because now there are conversations to include um, gender in all forms. So non binary, transgender, non cis, as well as in there. Um, so this even this goal is evolving as we're identifying versus the biological definition or the uh, the educational biological definition to what actually it is and I've read several things on this and I still can't quite put it into the right words um, but really it comes down to this everyone deserves the same opportunities to be treated the same no matter what their gender identity is and then clean sanitation and water so ensure the availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. It means that we shouldn't have to live in filth and that the water we drink and bathe with and cook with and everything else that we do with it is um, safe and it's clean. And then affordable energy. Ensure reliable, sustainable um affordable and modern energy for everyone. Um, so everybody needs access to energy. It needs to be sustainable to all. 
And so we need to be able to remove those things of blackouts, grayouts, loss of power. And loss of power can come in many forms, as in the grid gets shut off or a person's house gets shut off due to uh, economic power things. Okay. And what we've done here is very quickly gone through the first seven. At this point, I always want to ask the question, have we hit the majority of the identified inequities that were in our list that we, uh, we generated? And then I'm coming back through. I see gender expectations, right? We had a little bit about that. Um, economic struggle, struggles, eliminate poverty. Um, financial support. Mental health support falls into a uh, goal four. So as we're as I'm looking just looking through the list a little bit, we've hit a majority of them. Have we hit all of them? No, there's 17 goals. But we, we've gone through seven, and we've hit the majority of the list that we've had here. Does that mean that we should stop here and say, all right, that's it, we're done? Absolutely not. Right? But there are things in here that, we're, that we've now been able to say, all right, students, you've generated this list. Here are the goals they fit into. And the nice thing about the NEDC is that it doesn't have to fit into a specific subsection within the goal. It doesn't have to fit into, you know, 3.7A or whatever that is. It can just be, all right, we're talking about goal four. We're talking about goal two. We're talking about goal whatever that is. And so we've generated a list here of things that we're seeing in our, in our spaces that are hitting these UN goals because these goals are universal. They're not just, oh, you know, I live in a, in a kind of conservative neighborhood and someone once said, oh, well, that's for the third world countries. I'm like, no, no, it's not. It's for everybody because everybody has these same sort of issues that we're looking at. And that's a very narrow view about what you're talking about. And so, you know, we can start hitting these things and generating this list from that. Okay. So I want to keep going with this. As we get towards the end, we're going to get a little bit more esoteric and a little more sort of broad based. But hopefully we can hit some of these that we haven't hit yet with maybe housing, transportation, infrastructure. And so here we go. All right. So piece of work in economic growth. We want to make sure that we have sustainable economic growth. So we don't have things like the housing bubble, things like that, um, and decent work for all. And so what it means is that we should all be able to have steady work that earns a living wage. And living wage is important. All right. Hey, here's that infrastructure. So industry innovation infrastructure. We need a resilient infrastructure, sustainable industrialization, and to foster innovation. Okay. So what it means is that all construction, buildings, roads, bridges, whatever, are all built within the environment, are built to last, and for all people. And so this would fit into that um, missing piece that you identified, Kim, of housing, because this means that everything goes into that, and it needs to be affordable, built to last, and for everybody. Reduce inequalities. And it's pretty simple. We want to reduce inequalities. Um, and so I always come back to this. Be excellent to each other. If you have students who are like, hey, I know that movie. Awesome. Um, but let's be excellent to each other. But I do want to say that this talks about inequality, not inequity. And so just because things are equal does not mean there's a lot inequity. Right? So inequality versus inequity is a thin little line that sometimes we need to make sure that we have the conversation with students that are talking about, oh, inequality versus inequity. So sustainable cities and communities. So inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Um, this also ties into uh, a little bit with, uh, with housing and infrastructure. Um, so coal nights specifically, talks about 
individual buildings, individual projects. Goal 11 is talking about, all right, now we're living in a town, we're living in a village, we're living in a city. So they're, they're trying to make a point between the individual and the community. The responsible consumption and, and production. So we want to make sure that what we're doing is sustainable and is not destroying land resources and that all the activities that we're doing as we're building are also giving are also not taking away from too much from the land. You know, and we look at things like uh, sustainable buildings where there's like the LED, uh, um, uh, oh, I lost the word, but where they get, they get defined on, on tier of bronze, silver, gold, platinum, where if you're a platinum building, you're actually giving back to the um, environment rather than taking it from. So climate action, we need to take urgent action for climate change. Um, and so we're seeing this more and more uh, across the world where extreme climate events are much more common. So we need to take a look at this and how can we move back to stop climate change, right? And this also ties back to goal 12, where they're talking about um, sustainable interactions. This is what the world is, but this is now taking a look at, all right, we need to make some uh, some common things to do right now to stop climate change. All right, life below water. All right now we're talking about sustainability in the oceans and seas, marine resources. All right, and this is this is very similar to Goal Twelve, but we're only talking about under the, under the ocean. And we can see things like the Great Barrier Reef is ninety percent gone. This is what goal 12 is coming back to. How can we rebuild that? Right. And yes, Kim, I was referring to lead certification. I couldn't remember the word certification for some reason. Right. Um, so life on land, right. protect, restore, promote sustainable use of da, 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 da. There's a lot more here. What this is really saying is, hey, guess what? This is a lot like goal 14. However, we live on land, not under the ocean, so we have to be a little bit more specific. So this is where we get into the terrestrial ecosystems, managed forests, uh, desert, desert, desert thick. That word that I can't apparently I can't speak right now. Um, and then uh, reverse land de degradation and halt biodiversity. So this one gets a little bit more specific, and here's here's the nice thing about this. Um, if you have students who are like, oh, I really want to take some kind of global or uh, action on like what we're talking about with uh, rivers or something like that, yes, that would tie into goal 12, but it also could tie into goal 15 because of the uh, the uh, intersustainability of ecosystems. And so goal 15 really can tie into a lot of different things as we talk about things on land. Okay. So 16, most peaceful, justice, inclusive societies for sustainable development, right? And we want to make sure that it's accountable and inclusive on all institutions or on all levels. Right? So this takes all these different goals and says, hey, guess what? We need to take this all, we all need to do this together. And so we need to bring together different people, different cultural groups, and then we're going to add in this peaceful and inclusive. And so, you know, if if you're struggling with things and we're trying to figure out the different spaces where, all right, we're talking about some kind of injustice, you know, some kind of uh, inequality, this is kind of a nice little like catch all at the end. It's not quite as specific as you think, but it is that nice sort of just general overview. And then the last goal, let me get into the end of this, um, is partnerships for the goals. So strengthen the means of implementation, also global partnership with sustainable development. This is really the UN taking treaties from the 90s, like the Kyoto Treaty, the Kyoto Accords, and saying, hey, guess what? We need to hold ourselves accountable as we're talking about this. Okay. So 
could you have students and say, all right, we want to work with another group to work towards some of these goals? Absolutely, because it fits into this goal 17. Right. So at this point, we have now worked through all 17 goals. And so I want to come back to this list. And I'm looking specifically at the housing, transportation, i.e. infrastructure. All right. So infrastructure, we talked about. And then we're going to get the question of, oh, what about transportation? Does that fit into infrastructure? Oh, we talked about this. Where does that fit into? Oh, we talked about this. Where does that fit into? And so my question is, my question to you would be, how would you address that? We've talked about some of the specifics here, but have we covered every inequity that's, that we can identify? And so feel free to unmute or put it in the chat um, and let me know your thoughts. Yeah, Bill. Um, yeah, um, specifically, yeah, specifically, we've, we've had gone through some of these. We have found that um, they're addressed in there. Sometimes they're not specifically addressed, so you have to kind of work through and see where it kind of fits in. And uh, uh, but pretty much, we found a goal to match with different things that we have um, different issues or problems that have been addressed in there in some way or another, either from the goals or from the subsections underneath. So David, what you're saying then is that with a little bit more digging, you can find answers to some of those more specific questions. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you do. Sometimes we've we've gone through and found the kids have found uh, maybe a couple of them, a couple of the goals that it uh, might fit under. And then as they look more specific, sometimes they've uh, been able to uh, dig in and see, well, okay, it fits more with this one. This is what we're addressing. Sometimes they've been able to hone their solution a little bit more to one of the goals as well. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that. Um, on screen. Um, yes, and I saw someone put this in. So on the uh, the web page. There is a specific piece that shows all the goals at once, and then they get broken down. Of course, as I scroll through the chat, I am not seeing where that was. Oh, here it is. Okay. So here on this page is the 17 goals where it breaks down all 17. And then under each one, you click on them, click on this more info. We'll say we're looking at goal nine. And it can break down into the uh, subsections of each one. And there's even a nice little chart here. Although I found that this some of this data is a little bit old. Oh, they've updated it. Awesome. Um, and there's some events and some publications to read more. Um, so if we really wanted to dig in, so say we're doing like what David said, and we're we're diving in a little bit more. There's a little bit more as we scroll down within each one. So I hope that answered your uh, your question there, Carolina. Hey, Bill. Um, if yeah. you could go go back into one of them, I just want to point out something to some folks that might not know, and then it, more info. And if you scroll down. Um, Next to overview where it says targets and indicators, uh, if you click on that, those targets kind of give you a more narrowed focus on different aspects of each of those goals. That so makes it a little bit easier for a student to actually, like say, kind of hone in on something. 
I agree. And Kurt, I totally agree with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And with that, one of the uh, one of the things that was identified in the uh, chat as an inequity is language. And sometimes our students aren't able to go all the way through that. And so this is where, and I'm not trying. I'm not trying to like take away from this because I've used this, and I totally agree with you. Um, but at the same time, you know, you may have a student population um, where English is not their first language, or you have uh, struggling struggling learners with language, and so you might you might need to be able to go in there and break it down based on what they've done, which is going to take you know, okay, they've identified their inequities, and now we're trying to find that. So it might be a second a second day working through the models as well too. So definitely well, we actually had on. we actually had our center director. She took used Chat GPT to take every goal and every target and put it into more easier to understand wording. So it's really pretty cool. Right. No, it is. It really is cool. And I helped. I worked with Sarah on that. So oh, you did. Yeah. Oh, okay. I did. <laughs> so I know exactly what it is, and I know that there are some pieces that we kind of. Uh, had to fix it because chat GPT is great, but sometimes it's like, no, just no. Yeah, not quite. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you guys gonna, I'm sorry. Are you guys going to uh, share this PowerPoint with us? Yes. Thank you. Uh, and the question of, is this the research that we can share? We are working on that. And I hope to be able to share that, that GPT with, uh, with everybody. There is a uh, an issue in some school districts that they do not like GPT. And so we're trying to figure out ways to make sure that it's usable for everybody um, and it doesn't tie back to something that would be blocked for your districts. So we're working on it. And hopefully we'll be able to have it out sooner rather than later. All right, so now, I want to give you some time to sort of think about this and think of ways to work with students with this. So I am going to share um, the presentation and a little worksheet that is a starter point. It's not an endpoint, um, and it's 100% modeling. One thing that I am a big believer in is let you take things and make them work for your reality. Because how I might work with students might be, it's probably going to be a little bit different than how you work with students. And so I want to make sure that this is adaptable. And so sharing this with you, it will force you to make a copy of it. And then it will be yours and yours alone. So I put them both into the chat as well as a copy of the, uh, the presentation. Um, so what I would... <clears throat> what I would like you, you to do is to take the next 15 minutes or so and take a look at this and how would you modify it and modify it for all you, for what you would, for your reality. Because the reality of the students that I've worked with is in an urban setting in um, central Tucson. And that is not everybody's uh, reality. And so you have about 15 minutes to kind of take this and make it yours so that you can use it um, when we start the 24-25 school year. And then we'll stay on um, so that if you have any questions or if you have any comments or you have anything, revelations you want to share with us, uh, please feel free to do that. So any questions before I turn you loose? All right, the next 15 minutes are yours. Do, do with them what you will. Welcome back, everybody. Yes, I'm going to share my screen again. And here we are in our closing ceremony. Um, and I wouldn't really call this a ceremony. Um, right. But uh, one thing that we do want to do is so we spent the last three hours talking about the Mesa Way. 
right? And I know in the last session that I just led, we had some really interesting discussion about a lot of different things. Um, but what I want to do, what I want to do is be able to take this, take what we've done over these last three hours and really start putting it into what is the practice. And so we are going to create breakout rooms um, where we're going to put into, we're going to be put in these rooms and talk about your Mesa way. And they are going to be random rooms. So you may be with someone from your own state. You may be from someone you've never met before. We don't know, but talk about what is your Mesa way. And is there something that you took from this convening that you're going to add into your Mesa way? Because um, I know we've had, we have people in here who have been doing Mesa for 30 plus years. Um, if you're brand new to Mesa, this is the first time that you've been part of this, you know, what is your Mesa way? Start crafting, what do you, what do you want to do with this? Um, and so from that, you know, we want to be able to uh, start thinking about what is your Mesa way for your reality. Um, and so our breakout room is ready. Danielle, are you making the breakout rooms? Um, I was not, but I can. <laughs> I thought Nick was, but I don't know. Yeah. The person we were going to have do it isn't here. So, yeah. Got it. Uh, give right. me one second. All right. So breakout rooms are being made, um, and then we're going to uh, drop you in there. And so it's for 15 minutes, and when you come back, there's going to be some closing words, and then we'll, be, we'll send you on your way. There you go. So join your rooms. Hey, Tom. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. How's it going? How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Doing okay. Uh, sounds like you had some. How many folks did you have? Um, at our top, we were at about ninety some odd. So and the truth of the day, so I mean, it happens. Yeah, it looks like a few didn't come back. That's freak out. I mean, I remember, well, and I know like one person from New Mexico was in the middle of a camp, and she was like, "I've got to take my campers to lunch. Can I log off?" I'm like, yeah, go feed the kids. What? No, yeah, go feed kids. <laughs> And then, Tom, I want to ask you, is that link that you sent that was a draft, is that the same link for the survey you want people to take? Uh, yeah, so I can give you the link to the, as an editor, as an editor. to the, the survey itself, and then you can, it's like, or you can send me all the email addresses and I could send it out to them. Because um, sure. you do have to, you know, there's a button to send the survey and then you have to put in everyone's email addresses. Does that make sense? Yeah, let me send you a quick. And I'll just literally, I mean, I'll take like two minutes to talk about the survey. Um, it won't take is, long that, is that the survey? Because I, I want to be able to rep and say, all right, here, you can take the survey now, or you can, or I'm also going to send out later on. Uh, yeah, that is the survey, yes. Okay. Then then as you talk, when, you're, when you talk about it, then uh, I'll drop it into the chat so that, Oh, okay. And if people are thinking about it right now, they're going to do it. So. <laughs> great. That sounds great. How, how's it been going so far? Well, I think it's been going well. Do uh, you uh, have any back? Um, yeah, I think it's been going pretty good. Um, I was, I was uh, even during the morning session that was like an hour and a half. You know, most teachers didn't leave. They actually stayed and... And uh, we're there during that whole time uh, of that morning session, which, you know, was different.